it's been a long journey, um, extremely successful journey, especially for the kids. And uh, I couldn't be proud, more proud of them. That's why in this series, um, I, I think it's real interesting to watch that progression and kind of how this all happened and where they're at today. What we see in this docu-series is where it all started before the cameras started rolling, essentially, with Keeping Up With The Kardashians, yeah. and you and Chris becoming the original influencers, if you like, with yeah. infomercials in the 90s. Right. Chris tapped into that. She knew that was something. And then on it went reality TV. You know, social media titans in terms of the most followers on Instagram and so on, and the business empire they created. Looking back on it now, you know, there is a lot of criticism running through the documentary. I mean, there's no stone unturned. It's not like a, a rose-tinted view of everything. And exactly. Yes, yes, we go through a lot. When you look at what has been created, do you think it's good or bad? Because I think there's an interview with um, Kim in the documentaries that asks that question. Is what they created good or bad? Well, we live in America where our dreams can come true mm -hmm. if you work hard. If you're smart, um, you can even if you start with nothing, but you've got good ideas and you're willing to work. I remember Kimberly a couple of months ago, uh, she was kind of getting fed up with a lot of these young people that are growing up and really don't want to work, and, but they all want fame and they all want to be on Instagram and have a lot of followers and all that sort of stuff. And, um, and Kimberly, because of her success, she said, look, it, that, that's, you know, how do you get to where I'm at? Mm -hmm. You get up in the morning really early and you go to work mm -hmm. and you work all day long and you're really smart. And then when you get home, you get some sleep and you go back the next day and you work again. You work. That's how you get here. It's incredible. It did. Spawn, it's incredible. It did spawn a whole movement and a whole generation who, like you said, wanted to be famous for being famous. Like you said, the girls talked about the hard work that goes on behind it. But right. people wanted to be on reality TV. They wanted to have you know, millions of Instagram followers. What would you say, what advice would you give to parents whose children, when you say, what do you want to be when you grow up, say, I want to be a YouTuber or I want to be famous. I wonder if you have any regrets about what happened to your family and if you could offer any advice. I don't have any regrets with my family. Why? Because they know how to handle it. They've been doing this since the beginning. I mean, for a long time. Um, and they've had the highs, they've had the lows. Uh, they've learned a lot. They, they know more than I do. I mean, they're out there all the time. They're very sharp. So, uh, and because of that, uh, they've built tremendous businesses. Um, you know, Kylie, who I had no idea. I mean, she always had this fascination with, uh, with makeup. And uh, when they st we started the show, Kylie, I think, was nine. Kendall was 10 or eight, nine and 10, somewhere right around there. And Chris and I decided they were going to put everything that they made until they're 18 in a trust. And so everything went there. So when the girls turned 18, uh, they had a nice little nest egg of you know years of working and all put away for them. They did rather well, didn't they? Because one's a supermodel and now one's a billionaire. So you must be extremely proud of your girls. Well, I got and, two and billionaires right now. <laughs> And I think the third one's probably on the on way. On their way, three billionaires. Yes, they're creeping in. I can't tell you which one, that, but yeah, uh, very, <laughs> I'm sure very close. Sure, viewers can hazard a guess. Yeah, and and they've been yeah extraordinarily successful. Mm. New rules with the World Athletics um, ban on trans women competing in women's events, cycling, right. doing something similar, swimming, creating a separate right. event for trans women, but nobody wanted to compete in that event. Where do you stand on trans women being in sport? And it's such a mess. What do you think is needed to sort it out? Because it's become really the toxic. Only thing, the only thing you can do, I have been very clear on this subject for the last couple of years, uh, from the Leah Thomas thing, you know, back in the, in the U.S., um, in, uh, in swimming, um, trans, women, trans women should not be competing in women's sports, bottom line. If you'd have I have been, when I you have been out to your career, what would you have done, do you think? I, I never would have done that. I no. wouldn't, no, I, I never would have. You gotta real. I have to, I realize that if you're going through a transition, you're going through that. There's some things you can do and some things you can't do, okay? You gotta, you can't say, I am not this trans person that goes, I am a woman and you know, everybody else just quiet down, you know, and you better use the right pronouns. And I am not that, okay? I'm not even close to that. 
okay? Uh, I am a young person. I'm, I'm a person that suffered from gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is real, okay? It is real. And it needs to be treated in your own way. But it's very small. There's very few people in the country that really are truly gender dysphoric. And, uh, but um, I suffered with it my whole life. My, if you if you had a chance to read my book Secrets of My Life by Caitlin, I know Jenner. it's from, from being a, a small and child. And I go through the whole thing: the yeah. sneaking around, the lying, the behind closed doors, everything. And uh, I suffered with this my whole life. I raised families and suffered with it, and on and on and on. And I finally got to the point in my life with dealing with gender dysphoria that here I was, like 65 years old. I had done this my whole life. That. Um, I'm sick and tired of this, you know. I got, I got to live my life. All my kids are raised. Everything's done. 